I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Silly Jedi! Silly Jedi! Remember, the Force will be with you, always. You must unlearn what you have learned. Hello, what have we here? Hello there. At last, where have you been? Nice of you guys to drop by. Ah, good. New acquisitions. I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Star Wars Car Talk, the Jedi Toy Masters podcast. I'm Maurice, and uh, if you didn't know, we're on Instagram. So you can check us out on Instagram at Jedi Toy Masters. Uh, that's where uh, that's where we're pretty active. You know, we uh, come embrace you know embra- i was gonna say embracing i mean we are embracing but we're active in the community the the star wars community the t- star wars toy community and and everything in between uh we love star wars you know i started this uh instagram account a few years ago and it was kind of just to share my love of star wars with my sons and at the same time be kind of part of the star wars community and uh and it's been amazing it's been amazing not to get sentimental, guys, but it's been pretty stinking cool, you know? There's a lot of really great uh, fans out there, you know, d- despite what the, despite, you know, what the naysayers may say or, or despite, like, what the media might uh, kind of show that, you know, we're always complaining and bickering with one another and complaining about what's out there. And, you know, yes, we, we complain, but you know what? We, you know, people complain about everything, you know? You can be a you can be a diehard Yankees fan and then also have days where you're just complaining about them and, you know, so, so but you, you still love them. Uh, you're still rooting for them. So, uh, but that's, 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 uh, we've, that's been everything that we've I've discovered uh, as far as being part of the, the Star Wars community is just, you know, yes, there's the critical side of the fandom, uh, but there's also, there's also a, a really cool side, which is just, people just uh, remembering uh, this thing that was from their childhood that has impacted them and they're passing this along to their younger uh, the younger generation you know and it's something that then you know generations can share together that's what's that's what's been pretty cool about Star Wars the uh, the passing not just the passing of the torch it's more like the, it's more like a continue continuing the race together you know it's like it's it's you you, you start off the race and then before you know it, there's someone next to you encouraging you and then they're part of the race. And then, you know, and, and that's been kind of cool. Um, you know, the fact that we have the prequels and the sequel, uh, the, the, the original trilogy and even the sequel trilogy for all its flaws, you know, I mean, if you love it, you love it. You hate it, you hate it. Uh, what can I say? Um, and everything in between, between the, the, the other films and the, the new shows and all that. There's so much to love, and because there's so much to love, there is also so much to hate. I mean, there's things that you you can't. There can't be passion about something like you can't be. There, there, you know, there, there's passion for this franchise, and such great passion, because there's also things that people are passionately against. So you know, there's both sides. You can't have one without the other. Um, but talking about generations and passing the torch and all that stuff. Oh my, oh my. Uh, we're gonna touch on a couple of things today in today's episode. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the Obi-Wan trailer. Uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and oh my gosh. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Obi-Wan trailer. And then we're gonna we're gonna kinda go back because you know uh, the Obi if anything, the Obi-Wan trailer made us all feel nostalgic. I mean there was a lot of nostalgia in there and and uh, and, and different levels of nostalgia. For me, it kind of brought me back to a simpler time before the dark times, yeah, and uh, and it made me really think about a particular toy line and um, an era in Star Wars. So uh, let's get right to it. The Obi Wan trailer, wowzers, kawowzers. Uh, no, we were no one was expecting this. No one was expecting this. This was just this was really cool. I mean, I remember you know I was at work and I just happened to look on my phone and I see. Oh my gosh, the Entertainment Weekly cover for Obi-Wan is out. Oh, that's really cool. Let me look at this picture. Oh man, he looks, you know, and and so let's just talk about that first because he, they released these photos, Entertainment Weekly released these photos and they were out there and then all of a sudden 
uh, the Obi-Wan series Twitter account like went active and a message appeared on there that said hello there and I'm not really that active on Twitter but I but somebody did kind of screen cap it and post it on Instagram so that was interesting and then like before you knew it the trailer was out so uh, let's talk about the images first so these images you know Entertainment Weekly they're famous for um, you know throughout the history of Star Wars in, in kind of like the modern era of Star Wars uh, they've always done that um, also uh, I think it was um, I'm trying to remember what magazine but you know uh, Annie Leibovitz would always do the the uh, photo shoot those famous photo shoots when you know before a film was going to be released you know the the first one that I remember was the the episode one the Phantom Menace photo shoot and those images of of like Anakin and Obi-Wan and Padme and Qui-Gon and then you saw you know C-3PO with you know with without his plating and all and and, uh, and even Jar Jar you know there was you know Jar Jar the kind of photoshopped Jar Jar in there um and there were these set photos and stuff and you know you see George Lucas and uh and it was exciting it was exciting to see these images because we knew nothing we knew nothing about what this movie was going to be about i mean there was just rumors and hearsay and people people making stuff up and passing it off as actual credible information um yeah we didn't know anything that the internet was not what the internet was today then um but then you know it became a kind of like a little bit a little tradition too i mean even ahead of the force awakens again any Leibowitz, great photo shoot I can't what is it what magazine was it now I can't even remember the the name of the magazine I know if you're li if you're listening to me you're yelling it right now or if you're watching this on YouTube you, please put it in the comments cuz I for the life of me I can't remember it's not in Vogue it's not Vogue it's not Esquire it, well, well, I can't Vanity Fair I got it Vanity Fair oh my gosh it came to me guys it came to me Vanity Fair uh that that's what it was and uh, they became kind of like famous for having these uh, these kind of like exclusives. Entertainment Weekly also, you know, they 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 were the first, not the first, but they were you know posting photos of like uh, Solo when Solo movie was going to come out and like Rogue One and stuff like that. So it's really cool to see uh, these images uh, from the series. You see Obi Wan. I mean, this this is a grizzled Obi Wan. This is a defeated looking Obi-Wan it's a kind of a greasy Obi-Wan you know the one thing that I know people have commented on and I and I'll comment on it as well is that I was kind of expecting him to be a little grayer you know a little bit more grays in the hair and in the beard I mean this is 10 years after return uh, Revenge of the Sith 10 years so you know and even in Revenge of the Sith he had you know, he already looked, they kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, they kind of aged him up a little bit in Revenge of the Sith because they wanted him to kind of uh, denote the, uh, just the tiredness of the weariness of war, you know, and they had been through this clone war for so long. And, but also we wanted to see kind of like his first steps into becoming the older, wiser Obi-Wan that we see in A New Hope, the Alec Guinness Obi-Wan. Um, so they did a good job as far as like with the haircut and the way the beard looked. And then they had, you know, he had like little grays on the side and stuff. And even some like kind of highlights of gray in the hair itself. And maybe even in the beard, if I remember correctly. Here, however, I feel like, you know, the Tatooine son, instead of, instead of turning his hair lighter to accentuate the, the white of the beard and the hair, it seems to have made his hair and his beard darker. I mean, is he, or may, maybe he's, you know, he's touching it up with just for men, um, you know, but in, in, over in Tatooine, so nobody will recognize him. Maybe he's just touching it up to make him, make himself uh, look a little younger so that people won't suspect that he's this old Jedi or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, that was probably the first thing that, but it, you know, it didn't matter because this it's it's Ewan McGregor it's Obi-Wan and at this point honestly Ewan McGregor has played Obi-Wan you know uh, pound for pound minute by minute hour for hour he's played Obi-Wan a lot longer than Alec Guinness ever did uh, in fact Alec Guinness didn't even at towards you know he never really wanted to play Obi-Wan he didn't really care 
mean, let's be real. He didn't really care about the character. He, he, it was a paycheck. It was just, you know, it was him trying to stay relevant in his later in his career. And I, I, you know, for, for all the great roles that he's played, I mean, he's remembered for Obi-Wan and, uh, and I, and I'm sure that he didn't really care, you know? So, uh, you and McGregor, on the other hand, has, has played the character for so long now. He has a kingship to the character. He 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 cares about this character, and and I, uh, you know, I I feel like this is Obi Wan, you know, this is Obi Wan. I mean, you might as well CG superimpose you and McGregor into all the Alec Guinness scenes in the original trilogy, special edition style, and I will be fine with it at this point. I mean, don't please don't do it, Lucasfilm. If you're listening, don't do it. <coughs> I'm just saying, if you did. After the initial shock, I would kind of be like, okay, that's fine. But, um, but yeah, he, he looks, you know, he looks weary. He looks tired. He, he looks lost. He's, you know, it's 10 years of just fe- living a life of defeat in the desert, watching over Luke, you know, maybe interacting with the, with the Lars, you know, uh, a few times, but maybe, you know, having... You know, maybe him and Owen have had already issues where he's just like, you know, keep your distance. I don't want this kid to even know who you are or whatever. Um, it's 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 interesting. And then, you know, um, we don't know who he's talking to. His voice is kind of echoey. I mean, that could be just an effect for the trailer. But he's saying, you know, we we lost. We lost. It's over. Um, stay hidden. You know, that's that's what we're supposed to do. He could be maybe speaking into like one of these uh because you know he did leave like a holocron message let's see in um uh star wars rebels the animated show but <clears throat> this could also just be him talking to himself maybe talking to qui-gon maybe talking to yoda or, or you know something like that but it, it's just gonna it's interesting you know i don't want to speculate too much because sometimes when you speculate too much then you're way off and then you're kind of disappointed because whatever you cause sometimes the things that we, we come up with as fans are so spectacular that when we see the reality on the screen, we're just like, oh, OK. And a perfect example of that is the live action Grand Inquisitor. See, now, when I first saw this trailer, I did not think that was the Grand Inquisitor. I was like, oh, wow, another Inquisitor. You know, that that's kind of and then as I when I watched it again and again and then, you know, the comments started rolling in, uh, then it hit me. Oh, no. This is the Grand Inquisitor. Um, and I got to admit, I'm a little disappointed in the look. I mean, I know that there's been a lot. A lot has been said about uh, Rosario Dawson and Ahsoka and how she looks. And I and I agree. Like, they, it, it wouldn't have been so hard to tweak it a little bit and make it look more like the animated Ahsoka. I mean, come on. You know, it, it, would, it really wouldn't uh, be that difficult. And... People have already, I mean, some amazing, you know, fan artists have already kind of come in and, 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 and like tweaked the Grand Inquisitor in those shots and made him look more like the animated show. Not to mention that that creature, that species, we've already seen in Regge of the Sith on, uh, on Utapau. Utapau. And it's like, you know, yes, granted, it's probably like a big ordeal to, for the makeup and all that stuff. But... You know, they didn't have to go all out, but they could have at least made it a little bit more looking like a little bit more of like the cone head shape and the lines, those ridges. I mean, we, we're so familiar with the look of the Grand Inquisitor from the animated show. It's like you would have thought they would have. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm a little it's a, it, and granted, this is just a teaser. Maybe like when you see him full blown in the show, you know, maybe it'll it'll kind of like it'll just pass and your eyes will just adjust to the look of it. The other thing too is that honestly, like the after I realized that's oh no, that's the Grand Inquisitor. Then I thought, well, this is a teaser trailer, and who knows if they're still tweaking and fine tuning the 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 CG elements and the CGI in this show. I mean, at the rate that they're pumping out these shows, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're literally working on them right up until like the week that the show the episode is going to get released you know what i mean like just tweaking and rendering things and so i wouldn't be surprised if he it does look a little bit different once the show actually comes out remember i mean we're two months away so there's a lot of tweaking and adjusting that can that 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 could be taking place that we don't even know um the other thing too is that it's kind of cool it's it's cool 
it is cool to see the, the other Inquisitors, you know, um, we're introduced to a couple of new Inquisitors. So it's kind of growing, it, it, it's expanding this lore of the Inquisitors and who they are and what they do and how, how menacing they are and how dangerous they are. And the fact that, <clears throat> you know, when Obi-Wan tells Luke, you know, uh, Vader helped the Emperor hunt down the Jedi Knights, you know, um, yeah, Vader was in charge of hunting down the Jedi Knights, but it didn't mean that he was the only one out there hunting Jedi. Because remember, there was hundreds, if not, excuse me, thousands of Jedi out there. <clears throat> so he needed it. He needed it, like, to assemble his own little army of, you know, uh, specially trained folk that can take down a Jedi. And those are the Inquisitors. So it's a, it's a, the, when you think about it, it makes logical sense of why the Inquisitors exist. Um, it's also just kind of sad because at the end of the day, the, you know, the Sith, it's, it's all about, you know, the master and the apprentice. And, um, these Inquisitors, I don't know, like, did they ever, they, the thought ever crossed their mind that like, what, what happens after we're mission are done? What happens when we're done, and there's no more um, Jedi to hunt down? Like, what is what is Vader gonna do with us? What would the what will the Emperor do with us? Like, how will we be useful to him if this is our only mission, just hunting Jedi? Uh, so it's it'll be interesting to kind of see that dynamic, and who knows if during the course of this story part of the story will be that maybe maybe one of these inquisitors ends up turning you know um that's going to be interesting to see that unfold who knows um but yeah you see that there's they're hunting jedi you know you see uncle owen uh it's pretty cool to see a lot of these same actors come come back i know that um a Bill Organa is supposed to make a, a little cameo in the show, and um, <clears throat> that's going to be interesting to see uh, Jimmy Smith's back. And you know, obviously, Darth Vader is not in this trailer, but he he will be in the show, and Hayden Christensen was gonna, uh, will be reprising uh, Anakin in that role. And it's just going to be so interesting to see to see what we see. Uh, based on what we've seen already in this trailer and what we haven't seen in this trailer, uh, in this teaser, and, you know, what's to come. I mean, it's six episodes. It says it's a limited series. You know, usually when you hear that, you think, well, this is a one-and-done series then. But now there's rumors that they're considering a season two, which I don't know if I'm... Uh, I don't know how I feel about that because... Yes, this show has the potential to be epic and amazing, but uh, you, you, you've you already limited it to six episodes. So why would you do a season two and not just and not just make it an eight episode uh, show, you know, or a nine episode show and, and just leave it at that? I don't know. So, um, you know, I don't know. But... It, it, it's going to be interesting to see like what happens, what unfold, what story unfolds in this. Is this just a little pocket story um, of just Obi Wan finally coming, coming to terms with his mission and the importance of the one of Luke, and maybe this is just the story of his turning point in the mid, right in smack in the middle of this time in exile. You know, the first ten years were rough. But then th this happens, this story happens, and then after that, he becomes that the Jedi Grand Master that we see in Star Wars Rebels take down Darth Maul, and that we see in The New Hope go toe to toe with Vader and be so powerful in the Force that he literally like wills himself to become one with the Force and disappears. I mean, you know, um, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, we see a lot of new locations. He definitely goes off planet, so it's definitely an a, a, a a life-changing event for Obi-Wan. So, and maybe a new, another confrontation with Vader. Maybe this is the confrontation with Vader that then they both refer to, you know, where Vader says, you know, I've not felt this presence since. And, you know, maybe he's thinking about that battle that he kept secret from the, from the Emperor 
and from everyone else, you know, because maybe he was too embarrassed to admit that he let Obi-Wan go and he's out there or whatever, or maybe he thinks he killed him. Um, and that's why he is uneasy about the feeling, his feeling his presence in the new hope. And, you know, and he says to him, you know, when we, when we last met, I was, but the learner, now I am the master maybe that's has something definitely something to do with it. I think all those 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 lines are going to have definitely play into it which is kind of which is both cool but also kind of sucks because uh the way George Lucas wrote it and the way George Lucas laid out the prequels it was to it was to answer those the question of about that you know when according to I mean so you think according to George Lucas and his Star Wars <clears throat> Um, yeah, when, when Vader and Obi-Wan have that conversation on the Death Star, they're talking about their battle on Mustafar in episode three, you know, like that's supposed to be the last time that they met. So we're kind of, you know, Disney, Star Wars Disney is kind of rewriting history in a way. And I don't know. I mean, Deborah Chow is an amazing director. I don't know to what degree, um, to what extent. Dave Filoni is involved with this story, with the formation of the story and the writing of the story. And by extension, how is George Lucas involved? Because if Dave Filoni is involved in something, I, I guarantee you he he's touching base with George every now and then and kind of letting him know, like, this, this is this is what we're kind of doing. What do you think? You know, I got to believe that you got to believe that, you know, it, it's only it's only fair that he would do that. It's it's paying respect to the the man who brought him in and, and basically made him who he is, you know, and taught him everything he knows about Star Wars. Uh, but yeah, the Obi-Wan trailer looks epic. You got the awesome music. John Williams is coming back to score this show. That's kind of, that's really cool. You hear the Phantom Menace uh, Battle of, of the Fates music. You hear Battle of the Heroes you know, from episode three, there's a, there's so much really cool thing. I would love to see, I would love to get David W. Collins take on just the musical cues in this trailer. Oh man, if, if, if David, if you're listening or if somebody shoot David a DM, David W. Collins, amazing guy, the Star Wars, the soundtrack show podcast. And also he's worked with uh, Lucasfilm and LucasArts for so long and uh, an amazing, amazing guy, talented guy. And really uh, 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 just really great at breaking down the music of uh, you know of Star Wars and I would love to get his take on it so if you're following him on Instagram hit, shoot him a DM and be like hey man please do a video on the or do an episode on, on just the musical cues of the Obi-Wan teaser uh, I hope he's working on it right now uh, so that's that's the Obi-Wan trailer. I'm excited. Are you excited? Let me know in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, while you're at it, just hit the like button and subscribe and check out some of our videos. But what did you think of the Obi-Wan trailer? Uh, also, do, uh, send me a, a message on uh, on the old uh, Instagram at Jedi Toy Masters. I'm gonna po I'll do a post for this episode, and then you can um, uh, comment below on that. But the you, you know. Thing of, the thing about this Obi-Wan trailer that kind of most resonated with me is just it, it <clears throat> as excited as you know shows like The Mandalorian and Obi-Wan uh, I mean, not Obi-Wan uh, Boba Fett Book of Boba Fett ex as exciting as those episode those shows are and to watch and everything and you know yes it was amazing seeing uh, Luke Skywalker on screen with Ahsoka I mean that was just like amazing but there's something about this Obi-Wan show and this Obi-Wan trailer uh, that <clears throat> really sparked it, it just made me think of it made me think of like when the original trilogy when the original trilogy was released again uh, the special edition in the late 90s and then you know and then just that, that gearing up season of the prequels of the Phantom Menace of episode 1 the excitement and all that and and it really brought me back to even before that which is when the power of the force 2 line came out and just the feelings the excitement of the power of the force 2 of these toys being re-released 
Uh, some of them, the, it was the Kenner, it was the Kenner uh, vehicles. Excuse me, I had to take a little sip of the old coffee. But it was, you know, we had, we got the power of the Force to, <clears throat> excuse me, we had, it was the Kenner style of vehicles and play sets that were kind of remodeled, molded and repainted and stuff. I mean, yes, you can argue that the figures were weird. They were kind of bulky and kind of unique, but that's what they were. They were unique. It was a fresh take on Star Wars. I mean, how boring would it have been if they had just released all the Kenner figures all over again? I mean, granted, it would have been awesome too because for people like me that never got the Kenner uh, Star Wars stuff because I was too young and it was, most of it was gone by the time I was old enough to go to the toy store with my parents. Um, it would have been cool to have that second chance. I mean, it's kind of like nowadays when we have the retro line. You know, Hasbro has that retro line of figures. Um, but how cool would it have been if they would have released all of that stuff? So, yeah, they were unique. They were different. But, man, they were releasing so many figures. It was literally every figures, every figure from the movie and then some. And it was so exciting. It was just an, such an exciting time to, like, go to the toy store Go to, go to Toys R Us or KB Toys, if you remember KB Toys, and just going to that aisle where all you saw was Star Wars toys and Star Wars figures. It was just an amazing, amazing time. And, uh, and, and, and it's I've said this before, it, it's what got me back into Star Wars, and it's what helped me introduce Star Wars to my younger brother, who, who, and then that became our thing together. Like we became, I mean, you know, we were into wrestling and stuff, but uh, Star Wars became our thing as well. And that was really cool. And now that's something that I share with my sons and that he shares with his son. So it's it's just really, really cool. Uh, Power of the Force 2. Who remembers Power of the Force 2? What was your favorite Power of the Force 2? Uh, I don't want to say gimmick, but maybe figure or playset or you know anything from that time i'll tell you one thing i really loved the um when they were doing like the expanded universe stuff like you know when the, the shadows of the empire toys came out and then they would and then there was an expanded universe line uh which was basically like from the books from the thrawn books from you know uh uh the the um the 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 books were kind of like luke turned bad and then you know there was the emperor clone and all that stuff like those were just so cool it was just such a cool time to see all these different toys different variations and so it, it really you know this teaser trailer for obi-wan just really brought back all those feelings of nostalgia for for the toys you know for the toys for the toys of of that power of the force 2 line and and it's amazing to see that that there has been a little bit of resurgence in Power of the Force 2. I know I know a few, I, uh, there's a few uh, accounts that I follow on Instagram that are basically just dedicated to collecting Power of the Force 2. And that's awesome. I love that. You know, I, I, whenever I take out the figures that we have uh, that are from my teen years, basically, or and are my brother's childhood, because we, you know, we kind of played with those when he was small. And to see my boys play with them is just so cool you know like it's just so cool you know you for you you, you, you kind of forget oh well you know these figures don't have the articulation and this and, that. and it's like you know what who cares who cares neither did the kenner star wars figures and kids love them and use their imagination and you know it it kind of puts things in perspective a little bit you know we get so we get so snobby with toys nowadays where we're just like, well, this face sculpt doesn't even look like Luke. This is horrible. It's like, who cares? Who cares? Get the Luke figure that you like and just that's it. You know, we're, we're, we become we become kind of snobby with the toys, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll admit, so, so have I. You know, I get I get really snobby when it comes to like, oh, this figure looks horrible or, you know. But you know what? It's... It's just just be happy with with what we already got because obviously now we're not getting anything. I mean, it's so hard to find things. And you know, um, another great Star Wars podcast friend of the shows, All Wings Report In. Um, you, 
can listen, check them out wherever you listen to podcasts as well. And uh, Chris and Vin, they're brothers, they're fellow New Yorkers, and um, they love Star Wars, and they talk Star Wars. And in one of their recent episodes, they kind of touched on that, you know, just the, the, the ridiculousness of toy hunting nowadays and just going to the Walmarts and the Targets. And, and I have gotten into doing more toy hunts, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to do more toy hunts. Even if I go to a, a, a store and I don't see anything, or if I do see something and I don't buy it, I want to at least capture capture that moment and put it out there because I love toy hunt videos. I love watching other people's toy hunt videos because they're like these little time capsules, you know? I mean, imagine doing toy hunt videos during those years where the Toys R Us's and the KB Toys were like packed full of full of figures, full of figures on the pegs, you know? And being able to just have footage of that and 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 and, and in turn, also just having those be like memories, real memories of that time. You know, I mean, I, I just, I, I remember going to Star Wars, not to Star Wars, to Toys R Us every weekend with my younger brother. And we would just go right to that Star Wars aisle and just look at all the figures and just look at what's on the pegs and see if and there's any figure that, that we don't have or any figure that's new. And, I, and I've said this before and, you know, um, or even like later on, I remember I have memories too of like going to Star, going to Toys. I keep saying Star Wars, going to Toys R Us, and I remember uh, like during that time I wasn't really into collecting Star Wars anymore. I wasn't buying figures. My brother still was. Like whenever you know he had his part-time job and stuff through college, and 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 whenever he would see a cool figure or whatever, he would just you know he would uh, buy it, and then later on he, you know, whenever I would go over my parents house uh, and he was still living at home you know he would show me oh look at these figures I picked up and I'm like oh that's cool but at that point like you know I was I was in another place in life I was you know I was married and you know trying to be a grown-up and stuff and trying to trying to save up to go on vacation not buy Star Wars figures uh, but I but still like you know sometimes you would go to a Toys R Us to, you know like if we needed we were invited to like a baby shower or something or we needed to buy a gift for someone you know, we'd go to Toys R Us and I would always just sneak into the toy aisle and see what the Star Wars stuff they had. And this was during the Clone Wars animated show uh, era. And I just remember seeing so much Star Wars stuff on pegs. I mean, when you think about all these Clone Wars ships and the Clone Wars figures and how much they're worth now and how sought after they are and just forget about that, but just the play factor they are so cool i mean people complained about the clone wars ah george lucas this clone wars it's too much it's like all this stuff you know like it's too much like you're like why wasn't this stuff in the movies you know but man it, it's like if we could all collectively just go sorry george we were stupid <laughs> you know it was such a cool line of toys. They were the vehicles, the play sets, the, the, the figures. Oh man, they were so cool. And, you know, and, 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 and then, you know, like when Star Wars Rebels came out, I was expecting that same fanfare and we didn't really get it. I was, I was, I'm still waiting for the ghost ship, you know, play set or the ghost ship to just be released. Why isn't that a has lab? You know what I mean? Like, that ghost ship is probably like my favorite uh, after the Millennium Falcon <clears throat> that's like my favorite ship forget about Razor Crest that's my favorite ship the the ghost from Star Wars Rebels I, I think that is a, a really cool design oh man we never got it we never got it so you know and we, and we barely got figures uh, you know for that show I mean it was just it's sad you know it's just sad but um, all that to say is, man, you know, Obi-Wan is back. The, 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 the prequel era is really back, has, has been back. I mean, with the, the final season of Clone Wars and the Bad Batch, you know, we got that. We got to enjoy that. And, um, you know, we, we get to kind of like now uh, see, the, see the original trilogy in a new light because of this show we're gonna we're gonna you know it's gonna add more depth to that drama to that relationship to Darth Vader and to Obi-Wan and everything that Obi-Wan says in A New Hope to Luke and throughout the original trilogy is gonna have new meaning 
Um, hopefully it doesn't alter things too badly, but hopefully it just makes things better. It just makes more, gives us more context and more emotion, more gravity. And uh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait, guys. So um, let me know in the comments as well as far as like the toy hunts, man. What are you guys? What are you guys hunting for? What do you guys feel when the with the with the whole issues that we were having nowadays with with uh, uh, not enough stuff at the stores and not having a Toys R Us anymore to be able to be that hub for these things and having to search online and all this stuff like what do you guys think let me know in the comments below hit me up on Instagram at Jedi Toy Masters guys check out our other videos subscribe and like and all that cool stuff we our goal this year on this YouTube channel is to uh, is to hit that thousand subscriber mark and uh, and beyond. But uh, we would love to do that. So you can help by just clicking that little subscribe button and the like button, so that more people can discover our channel and our shows and our you know videos. Uh, and check us out on Instagram as well. So guys, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. And remember, the Force will be with you always.